Well, if you missed the interview again on my own Facebook page, Marky e. Bills, 500 followers on uh, for myself on Facebook. I'm going to have to get that account to go commercial here pretty soon. But uh, nevertheless, it's where if you missed the show, you can watch it again if you liked it uh, and that sort of thing. Again, to, you know, not a whole lot of uh, my goal is to win 20 games. It's just to stay healthy, that sort of thing from Daniel Norris. But uh, there you go. And as fastball has him, greatest in his 11 batter stint earlier this year, but that's not atrocious either. So, you know, you want to be below 1.25. You definitely don't want to be above two. You know? So it's sort of like, you know, ERA in the high fours, you know, something like that or whatever. You know, you can still get the quality start and have a 450 ERA. You know the quality start? I think most people do, but you don't hear about this stat anymore. It used to be real big was the quality start was a starting pitcher goes six innings and he allows three earned runs or less. And it was criticized because they said, well, then, 450 ERA. By the way, I got the sin that it once was, regardless. Uh, a couple of other baseball notes. Bobby Cox reportedly suffered a stroke last night. That was, uh, yeah. Uh, of course, he hasn't been the Braves' uh, manager since 2010, uh, about 10 years ago, I did a story on him, a big feature on Baseball Digest. I think that there are two really notable pinch hits in base manager has to call for it. I guess you can say, yeah, he's got a hit. Swarovski came up in 1960, and you know, Danny Murta had to have the foresight to bat him eighth. But, okay. <laughs> but, but anyway, now, uh, the two great pinch hits in baseball history uh, I would suggest, if you look at Dusty Rhodes in the 1954 World Series, on the New York Giants, yes, New York Giants swept the Cleveland Indians who had won 111 games, which at the time was the American League record. They feasted on a lot of bad teams, the atrocious. But uh, still, it really, I mean, I the Braves staffs of the 90s, you know, you had Maddox, Schmaltz, Glavin, and then, you know, whoever else, uh, Nagel or Liebrandt or, you know, Pete Smith, whatever, you know, but the four-man staff of the Indians back then, you had uh, all kinds of Hall of Famers. You had Bob Lemon, Bob Feller, Early Wynn, who won a hundred, who won 300 games. Is Early Wynn in the Hall? I think he is. And uh, Mike Garcia, who was sort of the left ERA championship. He was a very good pitcher of the era, and, and even then, the Indians just had, you know, Hal Newhauser, speaking of the Tigers, was a huge star in the four that sort of thing. They had Satchel Page. This is not in 54, but anyway, 48 when they won the World Series. You know, they had him, Gene Bearden. They had a lot of really good pitchers back in those days. And, uh, you know, so it was comparable to what the Brave staff was. Now, I mention that because, yes, they were foiled in the 54 World Series when Leo DeRocher, I mean, you know about the catch that Willie Mays made. The winning hits came in large World Series MVP the next year that was created in 1955. Had it been in 1954, uh, my guess is Dusty Rhodes would have won it. You could have made an argument for Mays with the catch, but, uh, you know, he was coming up with big, huge pinch hits to win game after game after game, and that won the series uh, for, for the Giants, swept the series for the under uh, against the favorite Indians, who, by the way, really screwed up. I've always thought Al Lopez was a... F uh, yeah, you're, I'm talking baseball history. I love to do it. I'm sorry. I know I got a bunch of consultants saying nobody has American heritage. We must say, I always thought time, but uh, when I look at these great sporting events, the 1954 World Series, I still want to know why Bob Feller didn't start Game Four. And if he did, I mean that's the storybook. He could have led an Indians comeback. I even down three nothing. I think they could have been the first team to come back from three L. If, they, if Lopez had gone with Feller in the fourth game, and that's what the storybook says, you go with the franchise, great, he stops the bleeding, and then you've got this great staff, now you potentially win three games in a row. It's a debate, it's not certainly anything that is uh, set in stone, but there you go. So that's your, you know, old-time baseball, uh, you know, argument of the day. Why didn't now Lopez start Bob Feller in the fourth game of the 54 series? Negative about Bob Feller in his career is he never won a series game. Anyway, where am I going with that? That's the story of the 54 World Series and Dusty Rhodes. The other great pinch hit in baseball history, you know what it is, Francisco Cabrera to win the pennant for the Braves in 92. 
Jim Leland didn't have Stan Belinda warmed up properly enough. But then again, he hadn't pitched in a week. He didn't have it. But then again, it came down two outs in the ninth. There are two players Bobby Cox could have used. One was Francisco Cabrera. The other was Javi Lopez. Both were backup catchers, and both didn't have much experience. Cabrera was 3 for 10 in the 1992 season. That's all he had, you know. And I think Lopez had 21 at-bats or something in the season. You know, they were late call-ups, put on the roster, and this sort of thing. And why do you choose Francisco Cabrera? Is it because Lopez is the raw rookie? And Cabrera had at least played the year before for the Braves? Well, maybe that is the reason. Because although he always poo-pooed it, never said this, Cabrera had faced Belinda one time before. One time in the previous season. And he took him yard. And when you got that in the back of your head, and it's you're down to this, and it's like, wait a minute, Cabrera, you took that guy on the bump yard last year. Yeah, I'm I'm going to see if you can do it again. And certainly he did. I don't know how many people know that. That that was, yeah, that they had faced one before and Cabrera had taken them yard. They were down to their last two pinch hitters. Why do you use it? Well, that's as much Cox as it is the hitter. Deciding the right, you know, anybody who played Stratomatic can tell you that, right? You know, that's what it says in the back of the box. You know, it's all about choosing the right hitter at the right time. Okay, that's why you get into managing and such. So it was brilliant strategy by Bobby Cox. And uh, once, uh, certainly right there, I mean, that's one of the great strategic moves in baseball history. The Francisco Cabrera pinch hit. Anyway, Cox is 77. Uh, I do not have a, uh, it's a developing story. We'll find out where his health goes from that, but reportedly Bobby Cox has suffered a stroke. Uh, yeah, you know, I, I wonder, Cox was somebody you could always tell was coming from about a block away, because if he wasn't managing, he always was smoking a cigar. You know, they get defensive about it. Cox would let you know. You know, that, that was one of the recovery from, for him, uh, baseball play, and I mean, you know, I'm thinking baseball and strokes and men of that age. Uh, you know, think of, I remember Harry Carey suffered a stroke. And uh, he actually was able to recover and broadcast for 10 more years. Teddy Bruschi, more recently with the New England Patriots, survived to play pro football, which a lot of people thought. Uh, but that's one of the baseball notes right there that's going on. Of course, we just talked to Daniel Norris, and uh, tomorrow we will be broadcasting his old team, Science Hill, against the Unicoi County Blue Devils. Uh, at last report, uh, the Blue Devils. Uh, we last broadcast them a 3 nothing victory against Happy Valley. That was on Monday, with Peyton Whitson striking out 14. Now, son, this game tomorrow at Jason Cunningham, the Unicoi County Gas Utility District Health and Home Committee, the computer guy in Irwin, Irwin Utilities, the Irwin Paint and Body Shop, Clinchfield Federal Credit Union, Jones and Church Farms, the best tomatoes in the area or possibly beyond. I'll let you decide that. But they've got a good reputation. Relay for Life of Unicoi County and Jones Hardware. They're all sponsoring Unicoi County baseball and softball. The softball team now 5-0 and at Unicoi County in the Three Rivers Conference and alone in victory yesterday against the Clones or well, the Elizabeth and uh, softball team. We're now in this, you know, I said, you know, it's not, it's the Lady Vols, but it's not the Lady Bucks and uh, the, Mercer, they don't even let you call the team the Teddy Bears anymore, which was a, a great name up till 91 that the female teams had there. But that's now considered, uh, I don't know, they, they don't like to do that anymore. When we come 
Kepke with us, the Predators, and Adam Nelson coaching changes. I'm going to talk coaching changes. Who could be the Lady Vols coach?